Today, I'm gonna teach you how to make a root beer mead at home. So let's get started. So this recipe is super simple and it's made simple because of how I'm doing this and how I introduced the root beer flavoring. We're gonna talk about ways you can do this without using a syrup, which is what I did. But at its core, I, I'm not gonna say I cheated, but I am using what resources I have. This is uh, Zatarain's Root Beer Concentrate. This is a four ounce little bottle. I got it at my local brew shop for somewhere between 10 and $15, and it makes five gallons of root beer. Generally, you put this thing in just regular sugar, you pour this into water, and then you carbonate it. And after the carbonation, you have root beer. Now we're making an alcoholic version of this, so there is some fermentation that's going to occur within this. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop up two recipe cards, and, and I'll do them one by one because there's different processes. If you would like to make this and you don't have the ability to force carbonate a brew, don't worry, you can still do it. So I have a bottle conditioned version, meaning that you can do this at home without any equipment, or any kegging equipment, I should say. That, that's this card right here. Now I'll show it to you and then we'll talk about the steps, but starting there. If you have the ability to keg this recipe, then here's the recipe card for that. It does have a couple different ingredients at the end of the recipe, and you'll see that because we're um, back sweetening with honey in that circumstance. And that is a force carbonated version, and we'll talk about how you can make that as well. So step one, if you wanna make this my way at least, you can use this syrup or uh, concentrate or any concentrate that you can find online. You can also make your own root beer extract. And I'll put in the description a link to somebody's extract, homemade extract version. It uses a lot of different things. So I, I have a list of it right here. For that, well, I guess for all root beer taste in general extract, it has sassafras, dried burdock, root, dried coriander seeds, star anise, clove, molasses, wintergreen leaves, uh, and sugar. Now, that's a lot of things to make the extract, and you can definitely do that at home. I just wanted to make this easier, then make this even simpler for you if you can just go buy this, which I'll put a link to an Amazon link below for an affiliate side. I'll be honest with you and say the price of this online with Amazon was way more expensive than I would normally wanna pay for. So if you have a local brew shop that supplies it, that's awesome. I think you can also get on their website and buy it for cheaper from them directly. Anyways, start with some root beer extract, whether you make it with that home recipe or you use this stuff. We're now going to take, and we're going to make a traditional mead to start. And then we will take and in, in, uh, do it each side essentially. So our base recipe for both of these is a traditional mead that used orange blossom honey. You can use any kind of honey. I recommend a lighter one to pop through in this circumstance. 1.5 pounds of orange blossom honey mixed in with one gallon of water. And then we're using the K1V1116 yeast for both recipes. You can use really any yeast in this circumstance. You're not gonna get a lot of yeast flavor because of how powerful the root beer extract is. We're also gonna use some Fermate O for yeast nutrient, and we're gonna let all of that ferment. Now, in the video you're seeing, you're seeing a very large container. That's because I made essentially five gallons of this recipe, which the recipe card is for one gallon. I made five gallons and then split it out and did both of my recipes from here. But I'm walking you through how to make this at home. So start by making your traditional mead. You're gonna do that right there. You're gonna mix all of those things up, put in your yeast. The starting gravity of this is gonna be somewhere around 1.054, maybe 5.5. And it will ferment to 1.000 because the yeast can handle that. So make sure you take a hydrometer reading to help you out with this. After you've mixed everything up, it will take two weeks, let's say, to ferment out from 1.055 to about 1.000. You can let it set for another week and let all of the yeast kind of start to settle at the bottom. But this is where our crossroads begin because both the bottle carb 
and the kegged version start the same way. Here's the little fork in the road we get to take. So we have our mead that's finished primary fermentation. You'll know it's finished by bubbling, slowing down, checking your hydrometer to see where it's at. If you want to make the bottle conditioned version, it's very important that you follow this next step. For the bottle conditioned version, you're now going to rack it into a new container. You're gonna wanna keep some yeast around because we're gonna need them. So don't worry about trying to not get some of that yeast at the bottom or sediment. Move it into a new container and go ahead and add your root beer extract. Specifically for this recipe, we need between 0.5 and 0.8 ounces. I'm using a range there because 0.8 is pretty strong and 0.5 is gonna be a little less strong, which is helpful. But use somewhere between that amount, you can kind of taste as you go. Go ahead and put it into the mead. This will reactivate the yeast. The yeast will have another fermentation cycle or secondary fermentation, which is okay. About five to seven days should go by. After that, your yeast should kind of stop consuming any sugars here, which there are still a little bit of sugars found in this. So this doesn't declare sugars in it, but I'm playing it safe. I don't want to worry about any bottle bombs happening or anything. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna add your flavoring in, 0.5 to 0.8 ounces, let it set for another week. And then at this point, you want to add your sugar to back sweeten. We are going to use a non-fermentable sugar, also known as erythritol, stevia, any of those options. It's non-fermentable, so it should add sweetness without the, the uh, yeast consuming said sugar. I am suggesting you add between eight and 12 ounces of erythritol or non-fermentable sugar. You should do this by taste, not just by my numbers. And to help with bottle carbonating for the yeast to actually create carbonation in the bottle, you're gonna add some priming sugar. This recipe lists 0.7 ounces of uh, corn sugar. However, you can get on any calculator and or any priming sugar calculator and figure out which one you wanna use. You might use table sugar, you might use corn sugar, you might use molasses. Whatever you wanna do, use a calculator. Add whatever sugar into the bottle that now has every ingredient, including the extract, including the non-fermentable sugar and the um, priming sugar and Easy enough, we're gonna bottle each one. We're gonna go ahead and raise our, our bottle up and it's gonna auto siphon and be moved into bottles. You're gonna bottle or cap said bottles like this and you're gonna wait between two and three weeks. Two or three weeks later, you will have a carbonated root beer mead that's back sweetened and good. We're gonna open this guy in a second. So that is a bottle conditioned version. Let's talk about the kegged side. We're gonna kind of rewind and go back to where we started our mead, we mixed everything up like we had talked about, including the yeast. It's gone through the fermentation. And now we're going to take and move it into a new container, attempting to get off any more yeast and really just anything else at the bottom. Because we are force carbonating, we don't need the yeast anymore. So we can go ahead and stabilize it or pasteurize. You can stabilize with potassium sorbate or potassium metabisulfide, both of them. Um, work in conjunction to halt further fermentation, or you can pasteurize by heating up the mead in you know, a sous vide or some other form, but essentially you wanna kill off your yeast. This allows us to add not only our root beer extract, 0.5 to 0.8 ounces, but also honey. So we're gonna add about a half a pound of honey to this mead to back sweeten it. Now you'll notice I haven't talked about gravity readings after adding things. You can go ahead and take a gravity reading with your hydrometer with both of these things after you add your sugar to see where it's at. More than likely, the honey version is gonna end up sweeter and that's okay. I prefer the honey, the kegged version because it has more honey uh, to back sweeten with because we can. So once we have mixed in our root beer extract and our honey, it, you can let it set for a while and try and clear if you'd like to do that or you can go ahead and just keg it, which force carbonating is the process of taking and putting it into a one gallon keg, or let's say a bigger keg setup, and actually putting CO2 gas onto it through that operation. I have a video on how to make this work for you if you would like to see that. And we have uh, options too, like one gallon kegs, like I mentioned. If I remember, I'll even put a one gallon keg in the description of one I recommend with an Amazon affiliate link. So we kegged the brew, we 
move it from container into a keg. We force carbonate it over the course of two to three days at about 30 PSI. And we have ourselves a kegged, force carbonated root beer mead. I have talked a lot and I'm ready to open these things up. So let me go ahead and first of all, we're gonna open up the bottle conditioned version, but I'm also gonna go get a quick pour of the force carbed. All right, so both of these poured beautifully. From the keg, we had a, obviously, keg coming off the tap there. It's hard to see carbonation in here because it's pretty dark. This is a dark looking brew that, you know, root beer extract is not light by any means. But it does have a stream of bubbles coming up. You can see from the top, looks pretty good. Same thing for our bottle conditioned. You can see them coming up on the sides. This is a, uh, Actually, interestingly enough, the, the kegged version is not even harder to see through. So the, the clear one is actually the bottle conditioned. It's kind of fun. All right. So let's go ahead and start with our bottle conditioned version. How does this thing taste? This is with our priming sugar, with the erythritol, the back sweetened. Yeah, okay, so the yeast proponent you're gonna have a little bit of a yeasty flavor in here. And that's because naturally they're, they're still in there. I mean, that's what helped us get the carbonation side. I could have also stirred them up whenever I was pouring this bottle. I probably got some of the yeast there at the bottom. So obviously it's not a ton, not like a concerning amount, but I do notice it. It does have that root beer flavor, duh. And the erythritol is not, not really bad. I mean, I don't normally love the taste of erythritol, but this one doesn't present in a weird way. The honey character is like a subtle thing that gets washed over by a lot of the root beer. So there's a reason I put that little scale of how much root beer extract to add. I would probably actually dial back the amount I did. I did 0.8 ounces per gallon. I should have done about 0.5 because that would help highlight more of the honey character because it does get a little washed. Overall though, that's pretty good. And I think if you try that at home, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, probably four or five week turnaround to make us work. So there's your option. There's that recipe card again for the bottle conditioned version if you're interested in that. Now let's hop on over to the kegged. Definitely sweeter. Much more honey characters present because we actually back sweetened with honey. Nice level of carbonation on both of them. This one definitely presents a little bit more mead character it helps to highlight some of that uh, root beer side as well with the honey coming through. It's not overwhelming. In fact, I think it's pretty good. I did receive some notes. I sent this off to um, a competition and they said it tastes way more like root beer than mead. And I think the truth is root beer extract is so stinking strong. So dialing back the amount of root beer extract would really help. That's pretty, both of these are good and I would, I could kill both of these, and I probably will. But regardless of the way you do this, this root beer mead has been really fun. And it starts off easy, and it ends super easy, either way you wanna do this. If you can't get root beer extract in this form or something else, go ahead and try that, the, um, the extract recipe that I put down in the description. Not my recipe again, this is found online. Let me know how it works. I don't know the ratios on how much you add of that stuff, so you'll have to play around with it a little bit, but there are options. I know some people won't be able to get this extract. So that's how you make a root beer mead at home. If you were wanting to do one, it's pretty easy. I am proud of this recipe, and I think you'll enjoy it if you try it. If you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe because I make a lot of mead making content, and I love getting to teach you new mead recipes and ways to make things, and I have a lot of recipes already out there too. So feel free to hit the subscribe button, like the video, that just helps the YouTube algorithm say, hey, this video's uh, worth watching. And then, of course, there are some affiliate links down below. I like, talked about them earlier. Those affiliate links go to support me, like the kegging stuff. It's just a little kickback to me. It doesn't, it doesn't add anything to your cost. It just takes a little bit of the money that you spent and it puts it my way, which is kind of cool. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll see you in the future with another mead recipe or test or something else. 
See you then. Cheers.